This is the Wonderfully Made Podcast, and I'm your host, Fifi Buchanan. On this show, I share personal experiences, narrate stories I've written to reveal truths about life and the human experience. I also share lifestyle improvement tips in bite-sized episodes, so you can listen during your commute, in the office, or in the comfort of your own home. My desire is that every time you listen, you are reminded that you are wonderfully made. I don't know if I'll ever post this podcast episode, but I'm going to start off right off the bat and say that I'm going to be real with you. Today, I was thinking about quitting the show and I've been on break, so it's kind of wild to be feeling like quitting when I haven't even started the new season and a little bit scary to be starting out early on in the season with this feeling. Let me start from the beginning. My presence on social media, my name, my mission, hasn't really changed much. I've always been about wellness. I started out with creating food around wellness, but later on I started to realize that all the good food in the world is not going to overcome or make up for not having a a mindfulness practice in our lives. So once I realized that, I started to share about food and herbs, but then I started getting into sharing my mindfulness practices and going deeper with yoga and meditation, working with a therapist, and just seeing what changes that could make in my life as someone with ADHD and a tendency for anxiety. And I've felt the whole time I've been creating that I've been doing this as much for me as I have for anyone else because I felt like There wasn't a voice like mine. There wasn't anyone that was gentle. And I still struggle with being gentle with myself. And I wanted my inner voice to be a gentle one. And so here I am. But one thing that I find frustrating is a lack of progress or growth. And I feel like I've regressed in a lot of ways when I think about the stuff that I've created and not really being able to grow a community in the way I've wanted to. And I've gone to different people for advice and I've tried different things. Some stuff wasn't able to be implemented. Other stuff took a lot of time and money and it didn't really work. And either way, I just found myself so frustrated. And as a person with anxiety and being an analytical person, the tendency to catastrophize is like, I'm amazing at it. (laughs) It's not something to brag about, but I am darn good at starting to go down that spiral of this one thing is bad. A lot of things are bad. Everything is bad. And one of the skills that I learned in therapy was replacing those unhelpful thoughts with helpful ones. Is the world really going to end? What is the worst thing that could happen? How could you prepare or respond to that worst thing happening? Logically, I know the right thing, but sometimes... A good little menti bee is just right around the corner and there's nothing that I seemed to be able to do to stop it. But today I felt like quitting. I felt like I've already put in so much effort and I don't really feel like I've gotten much further, no matter how much new equipment or voice coaching or business counseling or workshops I go to or marketing or landing pages or free downloads I do. It just seems like I'm stuck. And you could tell me a million times, don't compare yourself or keep going because you want to keep going. But here's the thing. If my passion is in creating, then I could just create. I wouldn't have to put it out there for the public. I could just create and keep it to myself. Maybe it could be just a journal of mine. But to put myself out there, I have to be real and say that I want growth. I want to build a community around me. I want us to start helping each other instead of it just being me pouring into other people. So I don't really have advice, but I'm going to tell you what I've reflected on. And I've also had therapy today. So the one thing I've been thinking about is when you feel like quitting, but there is a tiny part of you that's just looking for a sign not to quit. It is to commit to less. And so if you are a content creator or a podcaster or a YouTuber, then maybe you change your cadence. Maybe you don't have a cadence at all for a little while because that's less pressure. You commit to less that way on top of the feeling that you have, you won't also feel like a failure because you haven't done what you committed to. I also think it's important to take time to address the wounds. 
Sometimes it causes us injury when we work really hard at things and we don't feel that we're progressing. It kind of feels like we've poured our time and energy and money and love into something that feels like a sinkhole. And that realization that things didn't really turn out like we wanted can hurt. But instead of being sort of, uh, I I can't think of a, a, a good word, but maybe feeling like we're being dismissed by someone saying, don't compare yourself to others or you should already know life doesn't work out the way we plan. Sometimes we need to take time to grieve where we are versus where we want to be or where we even need to be. And in that space, know that it's not just you. There are people that are seemingly far ahead of you on the path and there are people that seem to be behind you on the path and On both ends of that spectrum, there are people that wish they were somewhere other than where they are. It's just the human condition. And it doesn't come from desiring what we don't have, but it comes from that forward thinking that we all have, which is tends to be a good thing where we look into the future and we hope and we work for things and we say, in this amount of time, I'd like to be here. Or based on the circumstances I'm in, I need these things. Or always kind of looking to that next step as we should be but sometimes we're so far ahead and we start to get so fixated on that future we've envisioned that we kind of forget that it's not really with any certainty, no matter how much work we do. And I think it's important to grieve that, to know that when we get there, it might look a little different and to also be comforted in the fact that it might be different good instead of different bad. So I don't have all the answers. I don't even have a solution to the feeling I have of pulling myself out of the game and just quitting, even though a tiny part of me wants a sign that if I keep going, I will see progress, I will see growth, I will know that I'm helping people. There's a bigger part of me that's like, hey, you've put some good time in, let it go. (laughs) I'm not sure which way I'll go yet, but I am going to give myself time to address the wounds I feel I am going to sit down and figure out how I can commit to less. And I am going to acknowledge that how I feel is not an isolated feeling or thought. And there are probably many people who feel this way or have felt this way. It is part of, unfortunately, the human experience. Instead of choosing to continue to catastrophize, I am going to be working after this on some healthy thought replacements. And on top of that, I'm going to make sure I spend time with people who I know I can trust and be vulnerable with and have a good conversation and let myself be encouraged and be poured into the way I would do for them. I hope that each of you, as you're listening, can think of someone in your life that you feel safe, that you could talk to, that you could trust, even with your thoughts and ideas that some might call negative. Keep those people close. They matter so, so much. And if you're hearing this episode, then you know, I didn't quit. I kept going. And I hope you do too. If you're looking for a sign to not quit, this episode was it.